Hey everybody, welcome to Midweek Live. It is so good to maybe be seeing you this evening. I am hanging out here and I'm gonna, before as people are kind of getting on here for the next couple minutes, I just wanna give you a couple quick updates. First, uh, last weekend, oh my goodness, it was so much fun to see so many of you out at Greenlight Conference Center. It was a blast, I, I loved it. It was just a, a really great time to be able to talk to somebody. You even laughed at some of the jokes. That was like the best thing. Like I'm not talking to a camera like I am right now. Y'all laughed, that was a wonderful thing. Uh, tonight, I'm um, gonna go deeper into the box idea as well as a little bit more about what we talked about last weekend. Uh, a couple quick other notes. Uh, this weekend, we're back online, 9.30 a.m. Uh, for the Facebook Live or the Facebook premiere of the sermon. I can't wait for that. Uh, additionally, you can watch it on YouTube and all that stuff. That'll all be available this weekend. And the weekend after, we're going to be back out at Green Lake Conference Center and we're going to be doing baptism. And it's going to be a service all about baptism and it is going to be a blast. But I I'm going to get to that in a little bit. Um, a couple quick notes. If for any reason you're interested or, or want to know more about baptism, you got to let me know. Uh, send me an email, samprelots at ripandchurch.com. Let's talk about it. I would love to, to chat more about it. I think it'd be a lot of fun. So with that said, it's good to see you guys. Here in front of me is this box. And I had so much fun with this box this weekend. I kicked it halfway across the, the space out there at Greenlight Conference Center for a reason. Uh, and to do a quick recap of that, th this box to me is interesting. I use an Amazon box for a reason. Uh, Y'all got Amazon boxes, so because of that, every time you see an Amazon box, I want you to be able to, uh, I want you to be able to, uh, oh, that's a cool little bug, sorry. Never mind, we're back in this. <laughs> Every time you see an Amazon box, I want you to be able to think of this. I think this is what happens uh, in our life. We have these things we create, we have this box, and I'm gonna call it a, a God box tonight. Um, what we do is, as we grow up, um, we begin to form these ideas of who we think God is, and, and what we think God is, and, and all of these things, and we take it, and we take this box, and we form it into it. And what I want to get at is the fact that there are a lot of different things that um, go into this box here. Uh, there's different ideas and, and different places that we grab from that uh, form this box over time. And the, the thing that I think is interesting about it is the things that actually form this God box that uh, basically form our perception of who God is uh, come from a bunch of different areas. For, for instance, the life experience, right? You have an experience where maybe you, you get judged a little bit or something doesn't go well at, at school or um, you grow up and, and family life is hard and that forms a perception of who you think God is. Uh, your parents and your friends, what they say about who God is, that begins to form in your, in your mind who God is, and so all that goes into this idea of this is who God is. This is forming like the, the six walls of your God box. Uh, additionally, um, maybe what grandma and grandpa say about who God is. Maybe grandma's a little fire and brimstone-y. She, she says turn or burn or something like that, or who knows what, uh, what grandma might be saying about, about uh, who God is, but that kind of forms your perception of or idea of who God is. And so over time, we begin to have this, this box this box of who God is, and and the thing that might surprise you, because I think your my internet's going goofy. Um, the thing that I think might be surprising for you is that, and well, sorry, one more. I forgot one more thing. One more thing that sometimes forms our idea of who God is and what our God box looks like is like movies and TV shows and books that we read. We we read these things and they talk about who God is according to them, and it forms what we think of God. Well, the thing that we haven't mentioned yet is the Bible. We haven't even we haven't even mentioned the Bible. So, a lot of times, what happens is we grow up, get older, and and we begin to have this idea of who God is, and we haven't even begun to understand uh, from the the scope of, of who God is through the Bible. All we do is we have these ideas that are in our head. And so, I'm curious tonight if you guys want to jump. I'm curious what's going goofy. Give me a second here and let me see if I can fix this. All right, let's see if that works a little bit better. Sorry about that. Um, a question for you all tonight is this. What's something that you thought described God, but you realized later in life doesn't really describe God very well? So you thought described God, but doesn't really describe God very well. 
Um, for me, it, it was uh, judgmental. Growing up, maybe I had this idea or this perception that, that God was a little bit judgmental. And as I got older, I realized that most of the reasons that that was the case was because it had just been kind of drilled into me from other sources. Other people had kind of told me that God was judgmental or God believed certain things or God would do certain things to me uh, if I did X, Y, or Z. And so I had this perception that God was judgmental and it, it didn't work super well. Um, and later I realized that wasn't the case. But anyways, back to this God box thing really quickly. Um, so here's what I think happens more often than not. What I think happens is this. Um, we have this God box. We have these things that we believe about God. And then, like we've been talking about in this doubt series, there are these things that come to us. There's things that come up in our minds that we hear from TV or school or friends, and they're doubts. There are these doubts that kind of fester. And suddenly we, we have this doubt and we try to fit it in our God box, but who we think God is according to all the things we've heard or decided God is, doesn't fit with God. And what I want us to realize is that as we look at who God really is, more often than not, this box that we have isn't who God is. And so the problem isn't the doubt. The problem is the box. The box is too small. It, it doesn't fit together. And so what I want us to do and what I want us to think about as we go through this doubt series and why I think it is so important and so essential to really think about doubt in this way is I want us to take this box and rip it open and get rid of it. I love doing that. I've done it like three or four times over the last weekend. I want us to get rid of our boxes. Because so often, what we think doesn't fit with God because we have a doubt about, about something, some question that's on our mind, like God's judgmental or, or some other thing, the, the reason that it doesn't fit with God is because the God that we're looking to is a box and the box isn't really who God is. We've made it up in our heads. We've grabbed a hold of ideas and they're not really true. And even when we read the Bible, sometimes we go to the Bible with these ideas of God and we read them into it. It's so what I want to encourage us to do in this doubt series. What I think is so important about this doubt series is that we take the time to really understand and really grab a hold of these doubts and engage them. Look at them. Give them an honest uh, Go ahead, because, because when we actually engage these doubts and ask these questions of God in, in real and honest ways, what I can tell you from experiences, and believe me, I've had the gamut of doubts, if you're willing to believe in a God that's big enough, who God really is, He can handle your doubts. He can actually help you grow your faith by you engaging your doubts. You'll no longer have this tiny box of faith of who God is, you have this grand, like we're outside right now, like this is, this is a picture of a, a, a glimpse of just how magnificent God is because it's, it's beyond what we can comprehend. God is bigger than we can comprehend. And the fact that we have doubts is just another opportunity to explore the vastness of who God is. So <clears throat> this last weekend, um, we talked a little bit about the question of doubting whether or not God is on my side. And I'm curious, have you ever had that doubt? Have you ever doubted whether or not God is on your side? Um, have you been trying to do something and you're like, God, come on, what's the deal? Like, let's get going here. I'm trying to do this thing and I thought you're on my side. Why, why aren't you doing it? Uh, so... I think we've all struggled with this in some fashion or another, and, and I've experienced it personally plenty of times where I'm like, God, I mean, come on, seriously. Um, why aren't you you're on my side here? And I think a lot of times we go to Romans 8.31 where we say, if God is for us, then then who can be against us? And and, and we think about that kind of stuff, right? We think about those kinds of, of questions. We think God is on our side uh, because he's, God's for us. And, and we talked about that, but tonight, I want to take just a little bit of time and actually look at a different passage than what we looked at on Sunday. I want, I want to look at a passage in Galatians. So in Galatians, we actually get to see this, this thing, this, this spot where 
um, Paul is, is talking to a group of people who have fallen away. So they've basically taken this idea of, of who God is and what the good news about Jesus is, and it's gotten distorted. It's in Galatians, it's 1 verses 6 through 10, and it says this. And Paul is talking to them, and he's pretty blunt with them. He says this, I am shocked that you are turning away so soon from God, who called you to himself through the loving mercy of Christ. You are following a different way that pretends to be the good news, but is not the good news at all. You are being fooled by those who deliberately twist the truth concerning Christ. Let God's curse fall on anyone, including us or even an angel from heaven who preaches a different kind of good news than the one we preach to you. I say again, what we have said before, if anyone preaches an, any other good news than the one we welcomed, let that person be cursed. Obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. Now, what I love about that is it kind of dovetails off of what we talked about this weekend for a second. Um, Paul says, I'm not trying to please people, I'm trying to please God. How many of you struggle with people pleasing? You can say me if that's something that you struggle with. I'm guessing all of us struggle with people pleasing. It's such a real and, and normal thing. Uh, but, but Paul, he's like, no, I'm not doing this for other people. I'm doing this for God. I'm on God's side and he's the only side that I will ever be on. And uh, I think that gets to that a little bit. And what we talked about but but what Paul is saying here is that is that there's this message this message called the the gospel the good news this news about who Jesus is and guys this is what he's saying to the Galatians he's saying uh, it's been distorted like you're already turning away from it you're already starting to believe something else you've you've chosen to take yourself off of God's side and start joining this, this other side, this other group of teachers that he kind of gets into in a little bit. Um, so Paul, he, he kind of continues, shows his authority a little bit. He talks about how, how he came to believe in Jesus, how God literally changed him and transformed him, how he was proven to be right by the apostles. And then he has this crazy exchange with Peter where he's in this place eating with, with uh, other people that are Gentiles and Jews together, but then Peter comes and they separate. And Paul's saying, hey, Peter, you're not living how you said you were supposed to be living. And then Paul, he like calls out Peter, which is a crazy deal because it's Peter, like the rock on which the church is supposed to be built. So he calls him out. And the reason that he brings this up is this. There are some people that are trying to distort the faith, that are trying to like be showing how you can follow Jesus in different ways and it's not quite the truth of the gospel, the truth of the good news. And so Paul goes into this crazy amount of like, hey, this is what it really is. Like the rest of Galatians is all about this. And I'm just gonna read a few quick verses. Uh, one is in, the first one is in 2, 19 through 20. Um, he says this, he says, for when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me, so I died to the law. I stopped trying to meet all its requirements so that I might live for God. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So that's one thing. The second thing is this. He says this in 3, 13 through 14. He says, But Christ has rescued me from the curse pronounced by the law. When he was hung on the cross, he took upon himself the curse of our wrongdoing. For it is written in the scripture, Curses everyone who is hung on a tree. Through Christ Jesus, God has blessed the Gentiles with the same blessing he promised Abraham, so that he, that we who are believers might receive the promised Holy Spirit through faith. And then finally, in, in 26 through 29, in, in chapter 3, he says this, For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And all you who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ, like putting on new clothes. There's no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs, and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. Okay. I just read a whole bunch of scripture. I understand. I know that's a lot. So maybe digesting it a little bit. But here's what I want you to hear from this tonight. When Paul talks about God being for us, what he's saying is that Jesus literally came to rescue you and me. 
He came to be for us in the sense that he sent his son to actually be this, this person who would pay the price, who would be victorious over sin and death and bring us into a new life. And this is the gospel that Paul is talking about. This is the good news. And people, namely in Galatians, distort it so often. They begin to say, no, like there's another way to do it. It's, there's another possible way to believe in and follow Jesus. You've got to earn it. You've got to do these things in order to be good enough. You've got to be circumcised. You've got to eat certain foods. You've got to whatever. You've got to show up to church every weekend. You've got to do X, Y, and Z. And if you do those things, then you are good enough and you're a, you're a good Christian. You're going to be right with God. And, and Paul's saying, no, 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 that's not it. Like... You're not on God's side when you do those things. In fact, not only are you not on God's side, but you're forfeiting what you, what you think um, what, what was a good thing that, that God and through Jesus was provided for you. You're, you're trying to like overcome it and try to earn it when it's already been paid for. So, how God is for us matters. Sometimes we want to think that God is on our side and we want to think God is on our side because we just want him to be on our side. We want, we want him to do something for us in a certain way. But in reality, what God wants is for us to be on his side, to live in such a way where we are actually living according to the good news of who Jesus is. We're living according to who he's made us to be, where we're new, where we're set free, where we're not feeling like we have to earn this stuff, but literally we can live for Jesus and, and the in the way that we are set free by him. Um, God is on our side as we choose to be on God's side and live according to this good news. Uh, I think, I think really often what happens is as we try to live this way, um, we can often get caught up in our boxes. We, hear people say you got to live good enough like you have to earn it you can't do x y and z you're a bad person if you do this you're not good enough if you do that and whatever it might be and we start to construct these boxes and we hear verses that are thrown at us we start to think to ourselves or, or wonder if we're if we're good enough and we're worried that we're not fitting in the box and we're worried that God's not on our side and in reality what Paul teaches us and tells us is no you're getting it wrong when you chose to believe in and follow Jesus what you chose to do was be on God's side it's not about whether God's on your side you're you're on God's side and so when that's the case not only was God for you when you weren't on his side because he came after you to show you his love for you, not only was that the case, but was, what was also the case is, is the fact that as you're for him and as you're living your life for him, he's even more for you. He's even more working through you. He's even more renewing you and changing you from the inside out. And he's showing you and giving you the opportunity to see him in new ways that takes that box that you've constructed that makes you feel insecure and, and feel like maybe you're not good enough or maybe that you haven't done enough or that maybe God's not on your side and he doesn't really care about you when he actually does. He takes all of those things and he rips them to shreds and says, no, that box that you've created for me, it's not, it's not gonna fit me. I'm bigger than that. I'm more in love with you than that. There's no way you can separate me from, separate from my love. We can't, can't get away from it. God is most certainly on our side. God is most certainly loving us. God is most certainly bigger than our boxes. And there is no doubt that we can have that he can't handle. So as we finish out this night, I'm going to say a prayer and what I want to say and what I want to hopefully help you know and own for yourself is this. That you're good enough, not because you're good enough. You're good enough because God says you're good enough and makes you good enough through his son Jesus. And what you believe about God 
it's never going to be a, a full enough thing to really encompass God because it's God and God is God and it's bigger than anything that, that we can ever make of, of God. And then lastly, I'm oh, sorry for the mosquitoes. Um, what I want to encourage you to do is, is to live like it. To live like God can handle your doubts and also live like God is for you and that you can be for God in the way that you live. So let's pray and have a great night and thank you so much for being here, y'all. All right, let me say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for this beautiful night. Um, thank you for the fact that the open skies out here uh, and wherever the, everybody is, um, that you show us just how big you are and how silly it is for us to think that you can fit in a particular box of what we think about you. So we ask God that you would give us a big view of you, that you'd help us to know that you can handle our doubts. Help us also to know, God, that you are for us and that not only are you for us, but you make us good enough. Make us good by your son's doing, by Jesus' doing, that he accomplished it, not us. And then finally, God, as we live like that, Help us to live not worried about our doubts, but engaging them, knowing that it'll give us a bigger picture of you. And then also living like you are for us as we continue to live for you. And you can work through us and transform us and be your hands and feet and representatives and the people who show your light to this world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all so much for being out here. I'm obviously getting a little dark, so we're getting late. Um, but I hope you all have yourselves a fantastic night, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all again next week. All right, take care, y'all.